So Thomas Vincent Girardi, super lawyer, lawyer to the stars, lawyer to the judges. This guy has power beyond recognition. Let's call him the let's call him the Wizard of Oz. What do you mean by lawyer to judges? He planted a lot of judges. He lobbied for judges to get on the bench. He lobbied uh, for Gavin Newsom. He he had Gavin Newsom's cell phone number. He had Chief Beck, Charles Beck's cell phone number. He had power and he had money. And what he decided to do? Greed took over. He decided to be more greedy. Basically rob people of their settlements and eventually turned into a Ponzi scheme where uh, it's alleged that all these half a billion dollars or a billion dollars that he, that he got in settlements, they were just squandered. He didn't pay taxes. He gave it to his uh, blonde Barbie wife, uh, $25 million, which he uh, basically uh, put to the uh, Bahamas, Bahamian, Bahamian Islands in some account. He was having a good time. And, uh, you know, his lifestyle, he just basically blew all that money and he blew other people's money. And we're talking about burnt victims. We're talking about one um, lady, Erica Saldana, who I actually, I don't know if you know, I'm in trial. I'm watching this, some of this trial. I'm I know in- you've been attending and we've been texting together a little yeah. bit and um, you've been just <laughs> sort of giving me a little bit of the inside scoop from inside the courtroom. Yeah. So um, he's only alleged to have committed, what, embezzlement of client funds of, what, 10 to $15 million or something yes. like that? It's, yes. He may be innocent. We don't know. But obviously, your gut seems to lean towards this seems like it's bad. No, no. I, I'm going to tell you, you know, I, I usually like to defend people to a certain extent, but his toast, or oh. a, as, the, as the young kids say, his cooked. Because, really? Because, yeah, because I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way he's going to be explained his voicemail messages. So... For example, you heard these in the courtroom. I heard them in a courtroom and I looked and I said, what the F? He would call somebody up and say something like just lucidly, cogently, coherently, uh, Mrs. So-and-so, I got your phone call regarding your settlement and I'm kind of disappointed that you're not really concerned about my health. I've been going through a lot lately and I did make the phone calls to so-and-so and I'm on top of it. I understand that you're upset. I'm going to get that money for you. He'd leave messages like that. So he's guilt tripping a client who he owes money Gaslighting to? Gaslighting all his clients. And he told one of his clients that there was a special tax imposed for females. No, he said he really said that. And he's going to fly to Washington. I'm just surprised there isn't. Uh, and he's flying to Washington, D.C. to meet with the IRS agents to negotiate. I don't think females should get taxed. I know. It's, 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 of it's, course. It's banter. I mean, it's a joke, but the point is he, he, would say, he would say things like this to the client's just to stonewall them from getting their payments. And, you know, one heart-wrenching story. I was in court when this happened, and I think this was the best part about the trial. And I'm not there every day because I got to go to court myself. I have represent, I have clients that I represent. but You got responsibilities, I get well, it. Well, I'm lucky that m- my main courthouse, which is the Clara Foltz Shortwich Courthouse located on 210 West Temple Street, is directly across 350 West First Street, which is the Two of the biggest criminal courthouses in the country are next to each other, one block away. Roy Ball? The, no, that's Roy Ball is a different federal courthouse. Oh, okay. This is a new one, the 350, the U.S. Central District gotcha. Court. Okay. It looks like a cube, just to describe it. It's a, it's a mirror cube. Okay. And wow. when you walk in, you, you can look all the way up to the 15th floor straight shot. They built it so you could see so, everything wow. in transparency. So when you go up to the, whatever it is, the 15th floor, the 10th floor, you look right down. You can just throw yourself down and kill yourself it's that high oh, okay unbelievable building very uh, i want to go check that out actually that sounds you cool. could totally you should yeah. go it's unbelievable um i think they call it the billion dollar building i think they build it for a billion dollars i don't want to be there as a defendant no it's very intimidating when you walk in you got high ceilings you got the court the the judge comes out of nowhere like disintegrates or just comes like into some harry potter show. yeah just comes in through the wall like it just well, she appears she, david copperfield is a judge just i mean i'm exaggerating there's there, what you're saying but it just appears out of nowhere and there's there's tv st- uh it's flash screen tvs everywhere so when they're talking about stuff that you see everything the emails that is sending the people like you know take it easy i've been trying to get your money back and all this stuff this is uh tom, tom girardi. girardi so former super lawyer he was very famous and then i guess yeah. i guess um you know why he was famous well one of the points was he was brought in to fight pg and e yeah with aaron brockovich right and her team the firm she was but before apparently that, yeah but I heard he was famous before that. Tell me why. That, that case, the Aaron Brockovich w- w- case. Was he famous before that? He he helped Aaron Brockovich prove that there was toxic water right. in that Massachusetts water. Right. 
with Jan Schlipman, who was another attorney, and other people like that. But he was basically the major. And who was the main firm? I, I, I should probably pull up the name. Well, the the Jan J. Ann Schlipman was one of the attorneys I know because I met him. I was in Massachusetts at the time. Uh, my law professor uh, introduced me to him. He was basically a major star back then. Uh, Kapani, Professor Kapani, thank you so much for introducing me to him. In any event, um, yeah, he was a big wig, but Girardi and Keese, the law firm that you're talking about in California, they started doing suing PG&E. They started suing Indonesia Airlines for that airline crash. Do you remember that airline crash where 380 people died? He took that money... Never gave it to anybody. Was that Malaysian? Allegedly, Airlines? was that Allegedly. Malaysian Airlines crash? What which which I crash? Say? I just said no. Indonesia. It was in Indonesia. Yes, I but forgot. was it the Malay- Malaysian Air? Uh, it might have been. I think it was a big airline. And he crash. won. He got his three hundred eighteen million dollars settlement. Or something I think crazy. on the Aaron Brockovich case, she was a paralegal at another firm. Yeah, I want to say Mesa was the last name. I could be wrong. What was that? In I, uh, I, Thousand the, Oaks. Yes, who was that guy? That I, was the main uh, yes, I, trial attorney uh, that Aaron Brockovich was paralegaling with. She helped, obviously, spearhead the case, and then they brought in Tom Girardi as a big litigator right. to go help them go up against PG&E. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Masri, one. Masri Vito. That's the name of the law firm that you're there talking There you go. About. Masri. Yeah, Masri Vito. Yeah. And so then that case that they all won became the fodder for the Academy Award winning film. Yes, Aaron Brockovich. Um, so this is kind of like, but I, I feel like Tom Girardi was famous before this, which is why they brought him in in that PG&E case, but I don't know why. Um, he had been known to win cases beforehand. He was a locally well-known attorney. That just catapulted him to the stratosphere that super, he was. Superstar. But he was, he, man, Tom Girardi's been practicing since 1965. He's got 50 something years underneath his belt. At some point in your career, just like an actor, you're going to get a good gig. You're going to get that, you know, major mm-hmm. motion. That one. That, that one, one yeah. That, that pays off the house. He had five. He had five or six major ones. And on his website, I think it said he collected like a billion dollars in fees or half a billion dollars in fees. But here's the thing. Here's the rub. So those were legit fees. Yeah, just but, like percentages of of plaintiffs. Uh, he legitimately won it because settlements. he was a very um, charismatic a- attorney. And just to give you a little background, he does the California Legal Association uh, seminars in um, in Nevada, where people go and they listen to him, and people pay a lot of money to hear Tom Girardi speak. He put judges in power. He's got Gavin Newsom on a speed dial, Charles Beck on a speed dial. He's got State Bar, the, you know the people that investigate the, the wolves uh, that come out to investigate the wolves? Well, he's got connections to those people. Some guy named Layton, L-A-Y-T-O-N, that basically stopped many investigations against him. He had 200 complaints, 100 just complaining that he commingled funds from his attorney-client trust escrow account. Let me give you a perception of what an audit is, by the way, okay? I've been audited five times for nonsense complaints. People that have made lies about me saying, oh, you stole my money, you didn't do anything, okay? Mm -hmm. I've survived them, but going back in time, it is the equivalent of an IRS audit where you have to give the IRS everything you have, and you're, you're guilty until proven innocent at that point. So for him, Tom Girardi, I went through five, and it was hell. Hell, you get the letter. It says you're being audited. You don't sleep that night. You're, you're working until 5 in the morning getting your ducks in order. You're saying, why is this client lying or whatever they're accusing you of? Tom Girardi had 200 of those. All right? None of 200 them, audits? 200 complaints. Complaints. None of them landed on the bullseye. None of them even landed on the dartboard. He how swatted that, them away. How is that possible? He's yeah. connected. Like the Matrix. He went up and he just dodged 200 bullets. But all for not now where he's a defendant in this well, massive Now case. it's coming to fruition because all those people have been gone. They've been demoted, kicked out of the California. But the corruption, the nepotism that's been going on for years is being exposed. Uh, so is the headline here, and do you honestly believe in your heart of hearts, this man, super lawyer, super brilliant, yeah. super charming, he really just literally just stole from his clients? Well, okay, so the timeline is important. The prosecutor is saying between the years 2010 to 2020, yes. He had a cognitive decline in impairment in his brain. 
where I think at this point it's possible he doesn't know, but at the time he did know. Does that is make he, sense? Is he 85 years old? 85 years old. So when he was 70, 75, he was stealing S- with knowledge from his clients. I, I think, yes. Absolutely. Based on the conversations that I heard on the voicemail, there's no other way to explain he was lying to his clients. I'm in court, people. He, I'm listening to these audio, and I'm thinking as a lawyer, I can't get around that. He but, stole 10 to 20 million? 15 plus million. So he made half a billion in fees, but yet he decided to then steal 15 million more. Why? Well, it starts off back in 2001 uh, or 2002, like a long time ago. He wasn't paying taxes. See, here, here's, here's a dark secret that lawyers don't want to tell you. Okay. There's a reason I'm not, I don't have five Lamborghinis because I pay my taxes immediately. Most attorneys don't. When you get millions, 10, 20 million, you're thinking, wait, I'm not going to give the government half of my shit. Yeah, it's almost like sometimes you're not prepared for we the gotta, thinking we, of that. We got to think like, about this right. We could maybe yeah. do this with it or tax shelter that you're thinking yeah. differently because you don't want to let go. It was very difficult for me, and I'm not bragging. I, I pulled, I produced. Everybody's got to pay their taxes. I produced $10 million in verdicts, okay, in five year period where I was getting like a million, two million chunks. And my accountant was like, oh, yeah, half that goes to, to the government. And I said, are you kidding me? On a million dollars, I'm only going to keep $400,000? After it's, two, three years of the like hard when work. When you make a lot in, of money, it gets a lot more painful to pay taxes. It was super painful because yeah. I put years into work into it, and yeah. a million sounds like a lot. Because the numbers getting, go, go up as to what you're giving and away. And you're making 400000 on a million, and you're like, that's not that great. I mean, I got to do this all the time. It's not just one year, by the way, these lawyers. They got to constantly make this to pay their staff. They have overhead. They have office. They have secretary. They have attorneys well, we that are making $4,000. We live in a very high tax state. Yes. California. We The highest. One of the highest next to New York and New Jersey. So yes. the pain is real if you yeah. make up above a certain amount. Yeah. So and Some people have good years and bad years and great years. And then now, the great years, you really get hit hard. Now, watch this. If R.J. Manuelian didn't pay the taxes, I could tell you for sure. I would have made double, triple, quadruple on the money by investing it and not pay taxes. And then the government may never have asked me ever. That was the game that Girardi was playing. Was you like, mean you know, he was putting the money away into investments and never no, declaring opposite, it? No, opposite. He wasn't doing something smart or else I'd say he's a smart guy. Maybe he's investing and making money and is thinking, if I get busted, I'll pay the penalty and give the money back. Opposite. He's giving $25 million to his young Barbie wife so she could do movies uh, excuse me videos on mtv real house lo- yeah looking like look trying to look like britney spears and singing songs about like i don't know she's spending forty thousand dollars a month on her hair real and housewives of beverly Hills. yeah so basically tom girardi you're an idiot for marrying that girl i'm sure she loved you being a made december romance happens all the time when there's true love i'm sure you could hear the sarcasm in my voice tom girardi but you're a moron and you're more of a moron. Some people get married for reasons other than true love. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm one of those people. Wow. I went for true love for sure. Except for you, Tony. But some people get married for other reasons. Like yes. he, he probably just transactional. We won't get into you, Yeah. We won't get into who. But this guy's a moron because I heard those tapes firsthand. And the 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 part where he's trying to play is that I'm an old man. I didn't know what was going on, and I'm blaming my CFO, Mr. Kamen, who Christopher Kamen, who stole it. That might have been true now because I really think his cognitive decline, there was a doctor by the name of Dr. Chu that basically said that his cognitive abilities were were gone as an 85-year-old, and it's very possible she insinuated that he didn't know what was going on. But check this out. The uh, the prosecutor, Ali Mogassi, I forgot his name, Mogadassi. I actually ran into him in the, uh, in the bathroom coming out. Um, he killed, in my opinion, and they're going to be listening to this podcast he killed dr chu because dr chu didn't have the vid- the audio and videos that we heard in court and he asked him did you well, hear how this long audio? ago were those so that came after 2000 she only uh, uh she only was given information up till 2007 nothing after so the prosecutor made it look like the defense counsel spoon fed her information regarding tom girardi to come to a particular result namely he had a cognitive incline and most probably didn't know what was going on. Decline. So that's, decline, his, decline. That, that's his defense. That's his defense. Is that his only defense? But, you know, it's a good defense because they showed the MRI charge and he's got, a cloud, he's got clouds on his head. Like your brain would look dark gray and his, his brain on the hippocampus and the frontal lobe areas 
where the memory is, it has a lot of cloudy, white, bright, rainy spots. It looks like there's cl- it's raining on his on the cortex of his wow. brain. So neurological decay of some kind. It's it's yeah. Apparently Alzheimer's. Your, or your brain early. shrinks. I didn't know that. Your your head, your cranial aspect stays the same, but the brain shrinks. According I mean, I to feel Dr. It, Chu. I feel it daily. Yeah, calico makes it worse. <laughs> I'm sure it does. Yes. Sure. So, um, so his brain was on the de- on the decline. The question is, was it on the decline then? I'm going to get into something crazy for you. So hear, hear me out. If the jury decides that, yeah, back then he knew what he was doing, but back now, he might be gone now, he's going to be found guilty. And then what does the judge do? Does he send the senile man to prison that doesn't yeah, know yeah, what's going on? Yeah, the senile man has to now serve the prison sentence of the sane man who committed the crime. Of the, uh, and he doesn't identify with him. He has I'm no idea. I'm so sorry. And he has no idea. So here's what I think is going to happen. There's something called a compassionate release act under the federal guidelines if you have like cancer uh, yeah. a, a malignant mal- malignant disease they will release you immediately how do i know that it happened to me my client was found guilty on an international drug sting trial that i did back 20 years ago in front of judge matz it was a one-month trial cross howard a matz yes <gasps> I, I externed for him. You did? Yes. I was a federal extern what for Howard Matz. I literally was, yeah. me and Tracy were his go-to extern. You know, his son's at AOSA also. So no, used to be a prosecutor. No, yeah. I haven't. Ha- it's been yeah. a while. Judge Matz, yeah. This is when I was like a uh, second year at law school. Yeah. And then one of the things a lot of people would do was try to find a federal externship. So like yeah. find the federal court. And a judge that's more than willing to take you to work for them. Very fun experience, but sat in on a lot of real heavy duty criminal cases with him and the his clerks. How was he as far as a person? He wasn't so very nice to me. Interesting. Very interesting. He's very I mean, he's very I, terse. That's a good word to use. I, we working for him as an extern uh, in the federal system. You just get to like walk to lunch with this federal judge. Yeah. And, almost daily whenever yeah. he had time or hang yeah. out with him in chambers. Yeah. It was so interesting to watch like criminal trials from the, what do you call it? The stands? Where, where do people watch from? I was there. The audience. Yeah. The, the audience. And then afterwards go into, the in, go into chambers with him Yeah, and then see him pepper the clerks with questions and then also you with questions. And then it was our job to take all the data and kind of synthesize it and write up almost a brief for the clerks to then give to the judge, which recommends a ruling. So we're like really far down in the process, but we begin the process of like, we think this should be a yay or an A yeah. and then l- give the clerks the reasoning why that should be and the legal research behind it. And then the clerks would take that to the judge. And most of the time he would go with it, but sometimes he wouldn't, his instinct would just guide, but like a lot of criminal cases. And I don't know. I, it must be tough to be a judge. You were basically the brainstormers, and the judge yes. was the executive authority to accept it, like the president. Yep. So you brainstorm, bring legal yep. conclusion, and say, yep. yeah, I agree with you, yep. or I don't agree with and you. And I think it's a cool system. It yeah. works. Like it, You have oh. a lot of brains As long as you have smart together. law clerks, yeah. And, and you better have a judge who has like their finger on the po- like. Yeah. They have to be ethical and moral, and they have a lot of power. Yeah, so I did a trial, a long trial in front of him. So I know the compassionate release because after we lost, after I got my client a fantastic deal and he didn't want it because he thought, you know, I could beat the system, which is very hard to do. He lost, but he was released immediately because he had cancer. The same thing. But um, wait, was that with Howard Matz? Was that with Judge yeah, Matz? So was, Judge Matz made that decision to yes. release him? Yeah, Judge Matz made that decision to release him. Yeah, and he was he was going to serve twenty plus years easy on the drug on the on the drug deal, but he had four stage four cancer. And by the way, as soon as he was released, he was transferred to Prague, where he was from. And I think he died a month later. So and the other reason they do that is because the federal government doesn't want to be liable for the, you know, the cancer treatment and and the and the medical treatment. It's very, very not cost effective to have somebody like that to inside the prison. So there's many different reasons why compassionate release makes sense. Um. I do have one more story. So I was just saying, Tom Girardi, if he's convicted, just sorry to cut you off. No, no. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Judge Staten, Josephine Staten, S T A T O N, and I've been watching her. She's a great judge. I wouldn't be surprised if she says, you know what, the guy's an old senile man. He probably committed this crime, but to send him to jail at this point, it might even be cruel and unusual. He might be like, what? What's going on? Uh, is he that bad? He's wearing the same clothes every day. He doesn't comb his hair. I don't is that know. Part if he of the it. act. It may be, but but he looks bad. And if it's part of the act, let me give him the Oscar. 
How, how about the co-defendant? And I know he's not a co-defendant. not there. It's a separate case. Separate he's case being, is not there but yet. But he's a younger man? He's a CFO? younger man. Yeah, but you know, the, you know, there's a saying, there's no um, honor amongst thieves, right? So one guy stole, the other guy's blaming the other guy. It's not going to matter in the long run. They both stole. It seems like they were in on it together. I don't know about that part. I actually believe that the other guy stole from Tom without Tom knowing, but that's neither here nor but there. But is that in addition to them being in on it together to steal from clients? I don't know if, if, if Christopher Kamen was in on it from the get-go. Wow. But I do know he put his hand in the cookie jar and took out the cookies that he needed. <laughs> uh, what, but that's not ne neither here nor there because all you got to show is that the money wasn't supposed to go in Girardi's account, supposed to be earmarked in a separate Client trust like a, escrow account. A trust account, yeah. The the person is notified. You, Tony, are going to get $13 million. I have you sign a document that you authorize, authorizes me to release that money from my client trust escrow account. Yeah, you're my agent. You're a fiduciary. Then I me. cut the check and give you and give me, and then I have you sign another document saying you understand that I took 33 40% out. There's a whole bunch of processes. But even, I think, in that case, aren't isn't that check still going into my escrow account? Or are you like the manager, but it's a trust account for your client's proceeds? Like My understanding is that it would stay in the trust, client trust escrow account until the client authorizes for you to... Take your share. To take your share. Which right. is 33% or something like that. On well, 40 a, as a, in Tom's 40 case, in yeah. a, 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 as a plaintiff's but attorney. But the thing is, Tom didn't do that. He just took the money and he just funneled it to his wife. He used it like a piggy bank. According to the opening statement, he used his client trust us account like a piggy, piggy bank. Yeah, it's a big no-no. And you know it's so easy to do when you're in somebody. Of course it is. When you're in a position like somebody like that, it's you so- You got millions of dollars you got millions in your account. Like, you're like, listen, is it really going to matter? I mean, it's yeah. it's going to well, go, go into- go even, go Either it's going to go into 07 or it's going to go into 08. These are two accounts. And They're all under my name. One's a trust account. One's mine. I do have this Vegas trip coming up. Let me put it in 08. I'm going to use it. I'm going to put it right back. He's never going to know. What's the big deal? So easy. Exactly. And, and it's add, a lot of money. And add one more thing. So Tom Girardi said this to a banker. I've got other cases coming down the pipe. Exactly. Like, I'm going to, there's more Don't coming. Don't worry about it. we more coming. But you know what happened that killed his business? COVID. COVID killed, smashed his business. He actually emailed everybody saying we went from $33 million a year to I think a million or two million a year. It was like a 90%. In terms of just revenue? Revenue from because- trying the, cases? From trying cases and- What, he, the whole court system came to a grinding halt because of COVID? That combined with, he said, the workers working from home killed his business. That's what he said in the email. I saw the email. Why is that? So no more workman's comp claims? Productivity went down, he said. He said the people need to come into the office and start talking and start being creative. That's what he said in the emails. He firmly believed he was old school that the productivity went down because people were not showing up at work. And Whatever the reason is- Girardi and Keese went down the tubes and they were paying this moron, John, uh, t Tom Girardi, was hiring Leon Rimes at a million dollars a pop to sing at his Christmas event, for example. Throwing parties, buying Lamborghinis. She's a million dollars? Hey, who paid Leon Rimes for a well, million dollars? I was going to reach out. But Jeez, I mean, absolutely. What a, anyway, that's even more moronic than I thought. But the point is, he would just spend all this money and when you're living that lifestyle, of course you need a hundred million dollar settlements because... Half of it's going to your client. The other half of it's going to the government. You're left with like 20 million, 30 million. Sounds like a lot. But guess what? You got overhead. You got your uh, well, associates your to pay it's for. It's your lifestyle too. And your lifestyle. You know, you like uh, I remember, I don't know if it was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but it's one of these financial books. Robert Kiyosaki. Loved. Yeah, yes. he's, it's an awesome book. Mm -hmm. But there's a bunch of them. And somebody somewhere along the way gave, uh, said this wisdom I always remember, which is like, you can get wealthy by either making more than you spend or spending less than you make it either way it just you can't spend more than you make if you have a lot or you have a little this guy it's like i call it golden handcuffs right you become yeah. a big law firm and you're a name partner and you're right. making millions but you're like car payment your home payment right. your vacation home payment your vacation budget your kids accounts Everything is through the roof. Do you know what that happened to? Who else it happened to? No. So many people. How, you, you know, what How about just keep the spigot down when you're making money? Yeah. Why do you have to spend it all? Tell me who this happened to. Who else? Who his indictment is? Uh, aside from Tom Girardi, who that happened to? Let me see here. Take a look at the top. Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti. Happened to him too. He took client escrow count money. 
and he was making X amount. He claims on his website he made a billion another, dollars in settlement. Another super lawyer that made millions yeah, but then yeah. got caught for embezzlement. It's, Am I right? Embezzlement, mis- fraud. He he made fake uh, documents showing that he made money in certain years when he didn't. When it, but basically, uh, you know, made it better for him. And on the flip side, he made his doc his income less when it when it made it better for him. He, he I guess he was photoshopping it. He's got to be really good at Photoshop. Seriously, at that level? At that level. Well, it's not that complicated. I mean, well, think by about the Photoshop. way, FYI, that does there's now software, just so people understand, that can easily plug and play and tell if something's been really? ma- manipulated. If you Photoshop. flatten the image and you do PDF and you flatten the image on Photoshop, yeah, you can yeah, still find you, out you're flattening you, the image. You can still there's software that'll Probably. allow you to see the keystrokes that were done to get them. out. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's what that guy was doing. Avenatti was doing the same thing. And here's my theory behind that, okay? Avenatti and Girardi would have been well off. These guys would have had 20 it, million, it, 30 million. If the wheel kept turning. No, no. I'm saying if they were just not greedy, paid if they their taxes, stayed legit, gotcha. if they just said just, just you know, well, they would have been doing great. I don't know if you know. I, I I got lucky with five small civil rights cases. I didn't yeah. go buy Lambos. I went and bought a little house. Yeah. And I flipped a couple of houses. I didn't have Lambos. I drove a Chevy Volt for many years. I drove a Prius for many years. Yeah, it's spend, used spend by the way. Used. Less than you make. I was living That's like it. I was living like a poor person, but I was pulling in yeah. money to buy a house sometimes people aren't satisfied with that. They want to show like they're big shots. They want to have big lifestyle. They want to have big shot parties, big shot friends. And by the way, where are Tom Girardi's friends in court? Nobody is there. Nobody is there. It's empty. Nobody wants to associate with the guy that everybody knew. Everybody wants to say, I know that guy. And all of a sudden now is a leper. By the way, no disrespect to famous people or celebrities or actors or Hollywood people. It's all good. But like if you hang out with too many of them, you might actually go broke. Yeah, because of the lifestyle. Because yeah, how they the live. lifestyle will mess you up. Yes, exactly. you got to be careful. There's not a lot of con- get some other friends. Yeah, I, I agree with you I, I, because I've I've been to these poker donation parties and all these stuff, and they, they, they just they have a warped sense of what real life is like. And a lot of them end up broke too. And Tom Girardi lost everything. And Michael Avenatti lost everything. Right. The sad part is they would have been multi multi millionaires had they just been happy with that one Range Rover and not the Lambo. Right. Had they and been happy just, with that $4 million, not $20 million about, and house. And continue to build just and, slowly. And build slowly. Like, yeah. take, why do you have to be a multi-deca millionaire? Like right away. At, at the 45, right. And at the expense of your client. And, and just killing every because they're thinking in their brain, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get these cases coming so I could play catch up. Fake it till you make it. I could fake that I'm and a also, deca millionaire. Could to, it be... Playing devil's advocate here, yeah. could it be that Tom Girardi never actually intended to keep any money from any client? Like in his mind, go with me for a second. Mm-hmm. Steel Manning. Okay. Could he have been thinking, um, I'm going to pay every penny of that to that person. I don't need to keep their freaking measly 15 mil. I got a half a bill. Who are th- No problem. I'm j- All I'm doing is I'm putting it in another account just for a little while. That's called a Ponzi I'm a- scheme. I'm going to move it over. That's called a Ponzi scheme. I'm wifey and I Vegas right. next week, the week after I'm going to move it over. But that's a Ponzi scheme. You're basically, but like in his head, he's not, he ball. never stole. He just moved. Well, he could think that in his head, but that's what a Ponzi scheme is. Right. A Ponzi scheme is defined as stealing from one person to account for another. Right. But you and he keep knows do- that and you got to keep doing that circularly because eventually you're never going to have the money that you need to pay the first person unless you cut, you could get unless a, there's financial austerity. Like you just start living like a poor person. You, you pay everybody back. Don't you think some people land that plane? They land it. Like they pull yeah. it off. And then at the end, nobody knows. And They're again, like, we're totally, good. I'm not going to reveal attorney clients. I have interviewed people that have done that, that have committed fraud, but they, they were smart enough to put the money back to cut their costs, walk away, and there's never been an investigation. Gotcha. Okay, I've interviewed these people. So they kind of make they Very make lucky. it good again at the end. They make it good again at the end. And they're like, Whew. you know what the percentage of that is? Oh, it's small. Slim to none. Yeah, usually you just keep going until the house of yeah, cards because falls apart. you get used to that that lifestyle. You think it's going to just keep coming and you're winning cases. Well, there's no breaks on this. And, and by the way, you're battling something that's very difficult to battle. It's called the ego. Mm-hmm. When you are yeah. on top of the world like Avenatti and every news press channel, when you're Tom Girardi, you can't get out. You can't get out. I, I, it's like a craps. 
game in Vegas. Like you don't, you're not going to be the one guy to pull out of the table. Like it's very ta- hard to. Yeah, you you got a group of friends. They're all celebrities. They're all spending. You're going to be the one guy. <laughs> one more drink here. One it's more like, drink what's there. wrong with Michael, man? He doesn't show up anymore. Like right. he keeps saying, like, guys, I can't do that other trip. I'm not blowing. Like I'm going to be wise with my money. What the hell's going on? Right. Is he poor? They would start talking smack. It's tough. Well, it's beyond that. You it's don't not, want. That. It's not only that, but th- he's transferring client trust escrow money for example there was a child for um erica saldana she was one year old they were involved in a car accident and she keeps emailing him and saying i need that money for my child i bought a house it would be very uh consistent with his disability can you please get it for him we're in a very small house he's quadriplegic all uh, and he keeps emailing saying you know basically i'm gonna get it for you there's there's this new law that passed whatever excuse in the book he gave then he Basically, after stonewalling her, he gives her like uh, hope and says, I have a check for you. It's ready to be picked up. I, I saw her testify to this and she had tears in her eyes. She said, I went thinking I was going to get a you know, check for like, I don't know, a million. He owed me 13 million. So I said, I had a check for you. I think you're going to be happy. She goes and she opens the check and it's a check for five thousand dollars. No way. Yeah, man. And come and, on, bro. And I, went, I mean, he's just that, toying. I with was people. in the trial when she said that. You couldn't hear anybody like a pin drop. That's just she, mean, right? She started crying, and I was thinking, MF her. Like, I can't believe you did. And then finally the other question was He's like, Do you want 10? Did you ever get the money to to get the house for your child? No, he died before I got the money. So the money that her that the child, Miss Erica Saldana, deserved. That, that was hers, rightfully hers. Even the interest that he was holding on to, the interest was hers. She never got to use that for her child, for her, her emotional being, well-being, mental well-being. And you could clearly see the mom is scarred from that. Are we talking Girardi or Avenatti? Girardi. So it just means... Avenatti, all Avenatti did was take away from a... a Defame a porn star, take well, away from a porn star, and a couple of other clients, yes. Big corporate clients? Yeah, like? there was some injuries, but this was like... But uh, this one person is... With, one 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 year old quadriplegic, another one that burns ninety percent burns all about his body. The the not to take away from what M- M- Avenatti did. No, but no, just, we're talking about Girardi. Just where we're talking about Girardi, I think he was on a different level. Even the the Malaysian Airlines not paying anybody anything and lying and saying I never got any money. It's, and is he just hoarding that cash, or he's giving it he's, to his Barbie doll wife? He's just she's so she's the problem. Twenty five million right there. So she's literally fifty percent of this problem is her. Twenty five well, million, not according to her. Wait a minute, he's only stole fifteen, and twenty five no, 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 went to her. Twenty five just to her, yeah. Twenty five million dollars just to her. Wow, she is excessively. Yeah, I mean the, the the whole fraud is more than uh, fifteen million. Yeah. I think they're alleging fifteen plus. But I think there's 25 million just that went to the Bahamian Islands somewhere, and is again, that, again, the the pro, the Dr. Chu is chalking it up to well, it's an old man, he doesn't know what he's doing. But when you hear those voicemail messages, I, I'm pretty convinced the jury's going to see right through that. He's, maybe, he's cognizant. Maybe he's not. His cognitive ability is gone now. I agree. I'm watching him. Although I got to tell you something really funny on the inside. I'm on the inside. So at one point. He's taking copious notes. I mean, he's 85. He's taking notes. What is he taking notes of? I don't know. You tell me. If, if his mind is shot. Is he drawing? And, and he's laughing at the right p- points. He gets upset when you br- besmirch his reputation. He gets upset. He gives a pissed off face. I think he's understanding what's going on. To a degree. I think it's more so than he wants you to think. But, uh, you know, I, I think the neurologist for the government that testified, Dr. Darby, said he's malingering. Do you know what that means? No. Malingering means that you have what you have, but you're exaggerating it to your benefit. Got it. So let's just say a child has a little bit of a cough. She could go to school, yeah. but she's coughing now, exaggerating. I've, oh, been, oh, oh. I've been that child. And oh my Lord, I think I'm dying. And she does have the cough, but she's adding more to it to the point where you're not really sure if it's the actual underlying uh, a cause or the, whether it's something else. That's the Ferris Bueller. Yes, Ferris uh, Bueller's day off. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, and there's, Rooney, and there's also something called uh, con- confabulation. Apparently, these confabulations are something that are real, but they involve sort of personal memories rather than factual information that you should know. So, Doctor Darby said during the trial that basically Tom Girardi claimed a lack of memory about you know things that you and I would be overlearn basic information about presidents and historical events, such as who was the president during the Civil War. 
most people would know that. So he's almost fought in World War II. So he's faking memory loss, but then there's tells that you're actually you right. should know that it's Lincoln. Right. Even even basically a moron that that has his brain gone would know that Civil War. Oh, sort of Im- Abe Lincoln. Like you wouldn't know that. Yeah. You know? It's imprinted. Uh, how many presidents have been shot and killed? You know, you probably say at least one that I know of, Kennedy, right? More. Well, a modern day. Obviously, Lincoln. Yeah. But you wouldn't say George Bush. You wouldn't say President Clinton. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, but is he saying that? N- well, he doesn't know who... Are the- they doing these little mini mental exams? Well, the it? defendant identified that, that it wasn't Lincoln. He said my, it wasn't Lincoln. Oh, so this just sounds like BS. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's like, so yeah. which indicated to uh, Darby, Dr. Darby, that the defendant likely did know that Lincoln was president during the Civil War. Oh, my God. So <laughs> and, he name-dropped Lincoln? Yeah, he name-dropped like, but it's but not Lincoln. But in the negative? <laughs> oh, <laughs> in the negative. no. Of the cognitive disorders identified, it wasn't uh, he said this... In in her opinion, would be only end stage dementia, which means that it's just the beginning. And she said that, uh, you know, would likely result in an educated patient thinking that George Bush was the president during Civil War or to be uncertain whether Europe was involved in World War II. So there's certain ways that answers are known to be BS or not BS. Right. He's trying to game the system, and that's what she's saying is gaming it. Uh, you know, Got it. to to an extent where he's hoping that people understand that he didn't know what he was doing at the time of these. Do, do you think these people have any chance of getting their money back that's owed to them? Some, I think they they have some of it. They earmarked it just like in Bernie Madoff. They were. You mean they to, confiscated his funds? They confiscated his properties. They for, they have a forfeiture on the properties. What about wifey face. who got twenty five mil? No. Because they can't grab that and give it back to the people? You know, that's interesting. What is going to happen? Are they going to sue her for that? I think that she had knowledge of that. She claims that she's just signing her husband's documents. She's an unwitting participant under the law. Yeah, but hold on. Even if she has zero knowledge, which I highly doubt, but let's say she doesn't have any knowledge, if the funds are not his to give away, then they're not hers to receive. So, like, it should go back to the... But if she's a bona fide receiver under the law... She's not a bona fide purchaser. But she, she might be a bona fide receiver. If I gave you... Just a receiver? Yeah, if I gave you... For example, if you're my son and I... I want to be a receiver. If I'm your... Bona fide if you're, receiver. If you're, my, if you're my grandson and I give you $50 million in my inheritance... Yeah, but it's after not I, yours. After I die, you find out that I've been stealing from other people. But you may have a fight and you might have a stake in saying that I, number one, I am, I'm innocent because I didn't know the money was only, I think if I reasonably relied about it and, and uh, and incurred some costs. And what would be your liability? Why would, why would, why would you, why would you be responsible for your, for for your grandfather's theft? Well, unless you knew about it or had reason to know about it, there'd be an argument to be made. It's yours. You're a bona fide person that inherited it. Yeah. To undo that, you know, it's not my level of. A, if my, it was a contract, it's not my area see, of practice. If it's a contract, yes, but not a gift. Again, I'm not. I'm not yeah, a civil attorney. Yeah, me, me neither. I, it's outside my circle of competence, yeah. as Warren Buffett would but say. But in a contract, there's consideration. So you presumably yeah. had some cost in gaining that benefit, and if it was reasonably relied upon by you, yeah. Reliance, you're gonna get. To Maybe keep it. you could backdoor by saying yeah. if you relied on it, you yeah. knew our reason to know. Yeah. Then, then his wife, the Barbie doll, um, would be able. Maybe to- she was smart and spent it all already. She did. <laughs> she was spending forty thousand dollars a month on hair and products. Forty thousand oh, dollars a month. How, that's not how I would have advised. How do you blow your she money? Shouldn't have spent it like that. that. I, she's a moron. She's just, these people have. You know what? Karma comes to you. I'm hoping that one day she'll realize what it's like to work hard for your money. And not just, you know, just smoke money like it's water. These people have no clue how hard it is to work out there. At $40,000 a month, you can't do it for $1,000 a month. You can't do it for 500 bucks a month. Your hair and makeup. That just seems outrageous and obnoxious to me. Unconscionable under the law, by the way. It's and, reality TV stuff, dude. Well, you know what? Uh, that's fine if it's really your it's money. It's a joke. It's, a, it's, it's if, an absolute, if, if, if that's it's an the abomination. Way you live it, but when... When your husband winds up stealing from other people to furnish that lifestyle, wild. Um, in my opinion, they should go after you for 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 something like you either knew or should have known. Yeah. Because your lawyer. But then again, she's gonna always fight back and say that's not fair for me. I didn't do it, and why is it fair for me? Well, I guess she has a point there because her husband is just a famous lawyer. She's saying he's a famous lawyer. He makes a lot of money, so they're not gonna go after her. Unfortunately. And right. unfortunately, she gets to keep the ill-gotten gain. Right. And I was going to say ill-gotten gains. What's the timeline on this trial? Uh, it's going to end next week. 
Uh, it's going to end. They're going to do closing arguments. The 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 opening statements were he used his um, he used his bank account in his law firm, his client trust escrow account, as his own personal piggy bank, which he did. Uh, he funneled it out. It doesn't make a difference that his other partner stole some money. That's beside the point. They're going to say they're both thieves. Yeah, but he commingled funds. He commingled his funds. Yeah. He committed fraud by telling the banks that he was solvent by sending fraudulent documents, making fraudulent claims, um, and he also basically lied to all of his uh, clients and gaslit them, basically saying, it's not my fault, it's the government's fault, it's your fault, whoever's fault, or they didn't pay me. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I think that I hate to say this. I think he will fee, be found guilty. I'm going to predict he's going to be found guilty. And I don't think he's going to do any prison time. I don't think it makes sense for him to do prison time because I see the guy in, in jail. He's a corpse walking. He's a dead man walking. He has no cognitive ability to understand what's going on. And if he does, it's very, very little. Uh, the other day he was coming. They'll in, still put him away, RJ, just to make maybe an Maybe a mental hospital. You got to make an example of, of somebody like best. this. But no more than the mental hospital. Putting that guy in prison is 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 problematic because he's going to wind up falling, hurting himself, and he's going to. If he's so out of it, he won't even know he's there. He'll be fine. Um. And plus, who cares? He stole freaking clients' well, money. Uh, okay, man. I what agree. A, what a I, scoundrel. I agree with you on a social level, but what's going to happen? Is his no. Wait, hold on. He's got family, and that family has, are have lawyers. And if his dad dies in jail, prison, because of something that the prison guards did, there's going to be a lawsuit regarding that. So as a judge... So you think I, it's a liability? Yes, of course it's a liability. He's a huge liability. Now, what you said is is good. I think you insinuated they should still take him into custody and put him in a mental health facility. Sure, put him in a padded but room. He's already, at the Bel- he's already at the Belmont Village right now. He's in a health facility getting there. So what doesn't sound what, bad enough. Well, it's going to be one TV less than what he has now. I mean, he's living a crappy life. I, I saw the guy walk into court. I'm not a fan, though, dude. He stole too much money from regular people. I mean, yeah. plane crash victims' yeah. families? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, Avenatti's doing like 20 years just on the same similar facts. Yeah, so let this old dude go do time. But, but he's That's 85, bullshit. you know, so... I don't care. He might live to 95. Put him in there. Yeah, but you know what, I, do, you know what I care about? I care if he doesn't know what's going on. That's, That's hard, cruel. That's super subjective. That's cru- Well, no, it's not. It's de- dependent on the psychiatrist, the neurologist. If the neurologist say right now his cognitive ability has no idea what's going on, that's cruel. I mean, that imagine taking your dad right now, waking up in the middle of the night, and you're going to go to prison, and your dad's like, "What's going on?" He's like, "Tony, what's going on?" And you're like, "I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry, dad." And he's going to prison. That's what's happening to him. He has no idea what's happening. You really believe he's that out of oh, it? Oh, I seen it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was sucking down a Hershey's chocolate the other day, like he was a five year old child, looking at it. And I was staring at him, looking at the eating the chocolate like it was a five year old. He was like sucking it down and looking at what it. What if he's toying with all of you in the courtroom? And it's all um, it's all an act, like Kaiser Soze. You know, usual suspects. Yeah, it could be. But according to four four psychologists, a, a psychotherapist, um, they all agree that he is a co- he's on the cognitive decline now for sure. So that's like 90% in agreement. The question is, was he back between 2010 and 2020? I think yes, because if you play the voicemails, you'll see in the emails, he's gaslighting everybody. All right, fine, he's guilty. There's two Tom Girardis, the Tom Girardi of 2000 to 2010, I'm sorry, 2010 to 2020, and then the Tom Girardi after. The question is, if we convict the old Tom Girardi, is it fair to put the new Tom Girardi, who's gone it's senile, kind of, it's kind of into fast. federal prison? In federal prison, this guy that doesn't identify, that doesn't remember what's going on, is that fair? It's kind of fascinating. He's just not a different person, but I get what we're doing here. Mentally, he is. He committed the crime. I agree. He did, he did, he should do the time. I agree. But what's the time? We're gonna take the senile guy that doesn't know what's You're going like, on. He's not that guy. He doesn't even remember anymore. He doesn't even remember that guy. Yeah. Maybe, you know what, I, I'm all right with, and again, I'm not a softy. I'm, believe it or not, I'm, I, I'm conservative when it comes to punishment. I think we should put him in a mental facility just to send a message to the public that he's not getting a free ride just because right. it's Tom Girardi. Yeah. That's the only reason. That's it. Uh, listen, the main thing is let the people get their money back. Let the people get the money. They're going to get back 50 cents on a the dollar. They're not going to get I mean, back all that's not them. terrible. Yeah. Well, some people have lost. Usually you hear about five cents, 10 yeah. cents, right? Yeah. Well, they froze his assets, so they froze it right away. The 25 mil is gone. The other money, I think, is tied up into his house and cars and all this. He bought nonsense jewelry. I don't know, all this is stuff. Is there any chance he's innocent at all? If they, if, well, there's one Hail Mary pass, yeah. as they say in football. Uh-huh. 
It could happen, and this is the only scenario I see it happening. What's up? He could take the stand, and people could feel bad for him that he's really gone. Like his mind is like that's not a normal. Yeah, like human you, being. you've you've already drank the Kool Aid. You seem like you're on. You're you're like, dude. I f you feel bad for the guy. Let, can I, I could tell. Can you I, feel can I do bad. An, can I do an impression of what Tom Girardi could do to get out of jail? Yeah. He sits there and goes, did, "Mr. Girardi, did you take these monies and you know, did you take the money and funnel it?" No, I didn't. I didn't take the money and funnel it. I've been doing this for fifty years. I know what I'm doing. I remember what was going on. So what happened, Mr. Girardi? Well, the money was the money was taken from who? From the escrow account? From who? The CFO took it from me. Why? I I don't know. But I would never do that. I would never do that. I've been doing this for years. I love those people to death. I, I email, but you see these emails, you see the phone calls, and he looks at him, he goes, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I did say that. I don't know what's going on. This is the, what he has to do. Bel plausible, plausible deniability. Plausible deniability. Yeah, like he's there, but he's not. But he remembers a little he's enough to put you there. He's but not denying it. He's not. He's saying he's he cloudy. would never doing it. He would never do it in his heart. Intense. Thereby, thereby he's causing the one or two jurors to say, Maybe he was a senile old man at the time that just had so many things going on. Empathize with that him. He didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I could see him taking a stand and convincing one or two people like myself to think if he was on cognitive decline, then how much cognitive decline did he have? Wow. And the CFO is a different story, but him, that's the only shot he has. But if he doesn't take that stand, I don't think he has a shot. And I'm not talking about a not guilty, by the way. I don't think he's going to be found not guilty. I think it's maybe a hung jury if he takes a stand. One or two people say, you know what? I don't know. That guy seems like an he's seen all old man. Probably did do it, but who knows? Wow. And and then he gets one or two. He do, you know blocks the field goal as they say in football. He gets a not guilty. Uh, excuse me, a hung, a hung jury. jury. Huh. Yeah, but he has to take that stand. And I would even if I were him, I would even get nasty. Would I be? I would get nasty like with a them. cranky old cranky cr old crazy man. person. He needs to be cranky old grandpa yeah. which would make sense to the jury like, i would never do that how dare you question me yeah and just like attacking the the prosecutor i would never do it and uh, screw you fuck you <laughs> you know no that would work that the jury would be taken aback by like oh my god this guy's got you know he's got you know balls of steel you know he's giving it back and maybe in he's his passionate. mind he's maybe passionate. in his mind he at believes that point, it. He, he believes it, it and maybe he didn't want to do it and now i'm thinking a combination right. of his his zeal to say I would never do it. I heard it now. I felt it now. And is senile. It could be a combination of a lot of things. So yeah, they could they could they could deflect. Uh, 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 the, and they're listening to this, by the way. The defense is listening to it. Charles Schneider, who's the defense attorney, mm -hmm. he's listening to the podcast. The Ali, who's the head DA, one of the head DAs, he's listening to it too. So now they're going to listen to it and they're going to know, but that's the only way. And if I was a prosecutor, I would play the recordings to him. I'd say, oh, do you recognize that recording? Is that mm -hmm, your voice? Mm -hmm. Is that what you said to them? And what is he going to say to that? He's going to listen to his own recording and say, I mean, I would come back and say, that's right, I said that. That's, that's all he could do was kind of like double down and say, I did say that. There you go. And confuse the jury. And that's not good like for him. Like negative, negative logic, you know, like, you know, kind of like, I did say that. And then... The jury's, and then all the defense attorney would argue is like, you know, he was all over the place. But here's the thing. Did you believe that in his heart, did you feel in his heart that he would do that intentionally? Or do we have just a senile old person that lost grip of his, of his firm? And after all, he was in his 70s, and I don't know what you're going to look like in your 70s, but that's tough to run a huge law firm in your 70s. Big time. And people could run roughshod over you like his people. So he, like they the gotta, CFO who's younger. The CFO who's younger. They got to they gotta present that picture, but Tom Girardi's got to put, put on the performance of his lifetime. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen. I wonder if you think, is he really going to take the stand? Well, do you know Alex Murdo, who allegedly yeah, shot and killed his uh, wife? He, he took the stand. He threw a Hail Mary pass. He failed. He failed. But that you know why he took the stand? Because he was going to fail anyway. Yeah, that was bad. So Girardi, I would say, is going to lose anyway. Uh, he'd have nothing I to lose. I wouldn't say Murda, Murdoch. Murdoch? Murdo. Yeah, I don't think he failed on the stand. He, he probably did a great job on the stand. But it, it was that there was actual recordings of him yeah. that he didn't know about. Oh, he, did. he didn't do well in the stand either. He couldn't explain it, and he came across really callous and, and didn't come across. He came across as a, 
um, defensive, almost. obsessive, compulsive person that likes to control things. Yeah. It seemed like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was uh, going after nitpicking every little. So, thing. Yeah, so I remember he, he that. didn't come. Across, but if Girardi does that too, mm. it might actually work for Girardi because they're gonna want to hear from Grandpa. And if he comes across as a grumpy grandpa, but that loves you, they're going to give him, they may give him a pass. What am I, I mean? Grumpy grandpa that loves you. Like, you know, obnoxious grandpa, but he gives you a hug at the end of the day. Like, I would never do that. That's not who I am. And screw you. But you did this, Mr. Girardi. And this is the message you left. Well, if I did that, it wasn't my intention because I've done this before. And he's got to like dr pile drive yeah. that, yeah. pile drive that home and look at the jury and be like, you know, you're out of control. You're blaming me for something I didn't do. I'm Turn 77 and see how you do like that, you know, to the prosecutor. Yeah. If he throws that and he makes a jury laugh a little bit and they're on his side, yeah. I could see a deflection, but that's a tall the order. The likelihood is low, right? It really is. Yeah. It's low, but that's all he has. That's all he's got. Yeah. But th that's and he the deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves uh, to get whatever's coming. Well, he, let me tell you, he's been punished in many ways. The worst way possible has been ostracized by everybody. It's... He's, they call him the disgraced lawyer. Nobody, I don't want that when I die. Nobody wants that. When you come to my grave, I don't want to be known as that guy was disgraced. I want people to look up to me and go, you must be very proud of your father and your grandfather, R.J. Manuel, and he did this and he did that. He was a good person. That's what you want to leave behind in your legacy. You don't want to leave behind he was a thief. He served 20 years in prison. He, you know, he turned yeah, into, yeah. That, that he, his brain tarnished. turned into yeah. mush yeah. and he wound up being a five-year-old that pooped in his pants and wore the same clothes that stole millions of dollars. That's not how you want to end your life. So he's being punished in that way. That's a collateral consequence. Um, but if you want him to be punished uh, punitively through the penal process, he'd have to go to a hospital like Patton State Hospital. Well, the thing is, that way is never enough for us. We need legal punishment. That way, every defendant gets punished. Not that if you're way. crazy. Not if you're old and I mean, senile. I guess it's arguable. But I, look, let, let, let me put it another way. Let me put it another way. If you killed somebody when you were 20 years old and they finally caught you at 99 and your brain is gone, don't you think the punishment should be a little different than when you were 20 years old and your brain was in place? Yes. So, in that extreme hypo, yeah. Well, okay, that's an extreme hypo, but yeah. I, that extreme hypo should apply, in my opinion, to uh, Mr. Girardi because even though I'm not on his side, even though that SOB should get what he deserves, I feel bad because that's not the same Tom Girardi, his... Cuckoo brain, let's just call him, all right? Yeah. Cuckoo brain. He's not all there. He might be malingering a little bit, but truly, I've seen him personally in, there walking, looking. He's got, like, when, when a crazy person looks, they stare right through you. That's all I could tell you. When he looks at me, he's not looking at me. It's like he's a looking through me. Grizzly bear look or something? Um, no, like, kind of like he's dreaming. It, like, I'm not sure. Glazed over glazed, a little bit? Yeah, glazed look. Like, he's just dreaming. He's looking around like, wow, am I really here? Am not I, connecting. Like a Disney, like, kid going to Disney's like, wow, he's marveling at everything. It's like, gotcha. he's walking everywhere, and it's always like that, and it's a slight glaze. Oh, it doesn't seem, like, over-exaggerated. Huh. And when he walked You're in, buying it. And, well, listen, when he walked in with that toffee or that chocolate, and he was sucking on it, like, there was no tomorrow, and he was all happy, and I was looking at him... <sighs> What either, flavor was that? Either he deserves an Academy Award or that guy's gone. Maybe it was really good. I don't know, man. That's impressive. <laughs> I, I was saying the same thing. I was yeah. like, this guy deserves the, the Oscar because he's really... But then again, he's also taking copious notes. He's sitting there. He's laughing at the right time. His affect is spot on. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's exactly where it should be if somebody understood what's going on. So I think the prosecutor is going to make that argument to the jury. You look at the affect. You know, when we joked, he laughed. When, when we insulted him, he got upset. You saw him get upset. You saw him taking notes. You, you know, so, and if he takes a stand, even more so. Now he's got more fodder for the jury on the, on the close. He could say, he understood what I said. And when I asked him who was the president at the time of the Civil War, he, the doctor even said, even a crazy person would know that. Right. If you ask a crazy person who was the first president of the United States, they wouldn't tell you Michael Jackson. It's not how right. it's not how it works. Fake crazy. It's fake crazy. Yeah. Real real crazy yeah. is going to be like a Abe Lincoln, but then say something a right. little say bit something off crazy, crazy, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they'll they'll say something like, well, you know, maybe some other president shouldn't have fought uh, uh, Mr. Lincoln. It wouldn't have been Ulysses S. Grant, for example, and that's understandable. Right, right, right. Uh, second president of the United States, you get wrong. Everybody would get wrong, obviously. 
a first president, nobody would. It's on your freaking no, dollar bill. I, I get what you're saying. So these are confabulations. Right. These confabulations it's are different than legitimate. Crazy. Yeah, they're they're personal knowledge combined with what everybody should know, even if you're crazy. Right. So there's a gauge for that, and we can tell if you're full of shit. Like right. If you're really crazy, or if you're faking crazy. Right. If I if I showed you color red and I asked you what color that right. was, and you said that's the president of the United States. That, that doesn't connect. Right. All right, let's wrap it up. I mean, we'll be looking at it. Let's see what happens to this poor guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not empathizing with him a lot. I'm not empathizing. You I'm, are more than I am, but that's uh, okay. I'm not empathizing. But you've been there and seen him in person, and I think it's kind of affected you, and that's okay. Yes, and you're, that's You're the kind, thing. and I get it. No, wait, no, but also, I'm, I'm there, and there's seven men, yeah. and there's, there's uh, six or seven women, and they're taking copious notes, and they're watching him, and they're feeling it. I'm looking at the jury, and I'm seeing how they see everything. Yeah, they're trying to figure things out. They're really doing trying to figure out. their job as absolutely good doing citizens. their job, and yeah. I love it. And when I'm that's looking cool. at them, I'm that's, getting giddy. I'm that's like, awesome. this is what you should be doing. They're taking yeah. notes. That's they're asking questions. They're coming in. Yeah. So I think they're going to get it right. But from my perspective. The way they were choking up when Saldana testified, I think he's going to be found guilty. And I think after he's going to be found guilty, the only question we're going to have is now what? Does he go to a mental hospital? Well, then it's a sentencing issue, which the jury doesn't have a part. No. Of. It goes straight to the judge. That's it. Same judge? Same judge. Okay. Yeah. It's going, to, it's, it's going to go to Staten, Judge Staten. And she's very nice, by the way. Mm. I really liked her. Her temperament's amazing. Um, nothing bad to say about her. Her, uh, her rulings are spot on. Um, I think, you know, she, everybody knows Tom Girardi. That's yeah. the weird part. He's so she knows him. Everybody knows him. He's a fixture. Man. He's a fixture. Especially like, in the courtroom. Gonna, it's, like, it's like the mafia. What am I going to do with you? You know, after he's found guilty. That's crazy. What am I going to do? That's a wild case. So eventually the judge is going to have to make a call. But I 85 wonder, years old. Let's I, see what happens. And listen, if there's anything big, let's report back. Yeah.